Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at a nice affordable two-in-one laptop from Lenovo. This is their Yoga 6, and this of course will work as a laptop, but you can also put it into display mode and run it like a tablet if you want. It's not all that heavy, it's powered with a Ryzen processor, and it performs quite well for the price point. And we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this is currently about $749 at Best Buy. This is the 2022 version of this laptop, which looks a lot like the prior edition, but there are some differences. The biggest one is that it has now a 16 by 10 display. This is running at 1920 by 1200. And that means you've got a little more vertical real estate on this version of the laptop versus the prior edition. So it's better for Word documents and web browsing because you can fit a little more of your document on the screen, which I think can make a big difference. Now the display has 300 nits of brightness, not bad for a laptop at around this price point. It covers 100% of sRGB and runs at 60 hertz. As you can see here running Microsoft Word, it performs pretty well doing basic tasks. This model has a Ryzen 5500U processor on board, although you can get a slightly faster 5700U version if you want higher performance. This version has 8 gigabytes of RAM installed. It is not upgradable, but there is a 16 gigabyte option available for a little more money. Both versions run in dual channel mode, which means for games and other things that make use of the graphical capabilities of this laptop, you'll get the best performance out of it. And you'll see that on our benchmark tests a little later in the review. Now there's not all that much storage on this laptop, only 256 gigabytes for the entry level configuration here. They do of course offer models with more storage or you can upgrade the storage later. It uses an NVMe SSD. The build quality is quite nice on this. It's not that heavy, 2.91 pounds or 1.32 kilograms. Even when you have it in its tablet mode here, it doesn't feel all that heavy compared to some of the other two-in-ones we've looked at. It's made mostly out of aluminum, but the rear lid here is made out of a fabric carpeting that feels pretty nice, but of course it's got a rigid backing to it. You can't take the carpeting off, it's just kind of part of the deal here, but it looks nice and different than what you might see from other laptops out there, which I think is always a nice way to differentiate yourself. There's a good amount of ports on this one. So on the left-hand side here, we have two USB-C ports. These are not, though, USB 4 ports, so you cannot use Thunderbolt devices with this laptop. But both of these ports are full service, so you get display output, data in and out, and power input out of both of these if you want. And of course, one of these will be used by the included power adapter. You have an HDMI output here, a full-size one, along with a headphone microphone jack. On the other side, you've got a micro SD card slot along with two full-size USB 3 ports and then the power button. So a nice array of ports here for plugging in all the stuff you need to plug in with it. And it has a very nice keyboard on board here. This is your standard Lenovo layout, but they got this layout right a couple of years back and they haven't changed it, which is good. Uh, the keys are well spaced, as you can see. They're nice and large. It's got decent travel for a thin and light laptop. And as you can see here, the keyboard is backlit too. And you can adjust the backlighting here with the function spacebar key. The trackpad is nice and accurate, but I have found it often reacts very sensitively to inadvertent taps on it. So I did turn off the tap to click and instead opt to use the click pad component to register my clicks on the touchpad here and that seemed to rectify most of the issues. You have a fingerprint reader here. It's got great stereo sound out of it. Actually, a better range of sound than I expected. You, of course, won't get super deep bass on it, but music actually sounds pretty good, and vocals and voices, if you're on a web conference or something, sound very nice and clear on this. Just note, though, that when you put the laptop into its display configuration with the keyboard down on the desk, those speakers are pointing downward and don't sound as good. So if you want the best sound out of these speakers, 
operate the machine here in its laptop configuration. And it's got a decent 1080p webcam here at the top. It's got the Lenovo shutter mechanism built in as well. So if you want to cover the lens up, you just slide it over as opposed to putting tape on it. The camera looks pretty good. I found that it struggles a little bit with exposure, but the resolution is certainly there. So I think you might have to get yourself into the right light for the best results here. But when you do have good light, it's going to look a lot better than the webcams we've seen on this grade of laptop in the past. So it's good to see higher resolution cameras making their way into the lower end of the market now. And the camera supports Windows Hello, so you can unlock with your face using the camera and or the fingerprint reader down here at the bottom. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll start with some basic web browsing here. We'll pull up the nasa.gov homepage and see how fast everything comes up on here. And as you can see, everything comes up very quickly. This has a Wi-Fi 6 radio on board and I have a Wi-Fi 6 network here at the house and the access point isn't too far away from the laptop and it performs very well. And of course, it's nice to have the touch display here so you can flip it into tablet mode and read at your leisure if you want. And a little bit earlier, we ran a 1080p 60 frames per second video from my YouTube channel and it performed well there. There was a couple of drop frames at the outset. We see that all the time, but after the video got started, it was able to keep up and play back that video without issue. So I think you'll have good performance with Netflix, Amazon Prime, and all of the other video streaming services out there. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 154.6 running in Google Chrome. That is pretty much where I would expect a machine powered by one of these Ryzen processors to land. Now you can also do some basic video editing on here. We've got DaVinci Resolve loaded up right now with a 4K 60 frames per second project. It plays back the clips just fine, but as you can see, it does struggle when it comes to doing some real-time rendering of simple transition effects. And that's a combination of the RAM and the processor at work here. Something with the GPU would be better for editing at these higher resolutions. But if you're just doing some basic clips and maybe working in 1080p, I think you'll be able to run a high-end video editor here and get usable performance out of it. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, I think you'll get about 12 hours out of this, if not more, if you turn the display brightness down. That estimate, though, is based on doing the basics, like word processing and email and web browsing. If you start really taxing the processor by playing games or doing some video editing, that, of course, is going to eat into the battery life more significantly. But I think for the kinds of purposes that this machine is designed for, you should easily get through a workday with it. So let's take a look at some gameplay now. We've got Fortnite running at 1920 by 1200 at the lowest settings. And as you can see here, the frame rate is kind of all over the place, but it generally hovers above 60 frames per second, although it does dip down uh, depending on what's getting rendered in the game. Uh, we also played Red Dead Redemption 2 at a 720p resolution. And on this particular processor, we were getting between 25 and 30 frames per second or thereabouts. Playable for sure, but I think the higher end version of this laptop will do a little better and stick closer to the 30 FPS side of things, but still playable nonetheless. We also loaded up GTA 5, and this was running at 1920 by 1200 lowest settings, and we were getting between 35 and 45 frames per second on this older game. So you can definitely run a bunch of games natively on it, and it will also do very well streaming games from uh, GeForce Now or from the Xbox Game Pass library. Now, one other thing to note on the gaming side of things, this is the prior generation of the Ryzen chips. There is now a 6000 series Ryzen processor on the way. In a short period of time, we'll start seeing laptops around this price range with those higher performing processors. So if you are looking at gaming as a somewhat primary activity here, this is probably one not to get for that purpose because there will be better performing chips in the near future. But for doing work-related tasks, I think this does perform quite well with the processor it has on board. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy Gaming Benchmark Test, we got a score of 1,213. That puts this right in line with other machines powered with the same CPU. By comparison, if you look at the HP Envy up there, that is powered by the 5700U processor, which is also available on this device. And you can see a slight bump in graphical and CPU performance with that one. 
Also take note of the 5800U, which has a slightly better graphics chipset on board that we found inside of the IdeaPad Slim 7. But remember, the 6000 series chips are right around the corner. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 97.4%. That indicates that the machine will be relatively consistent in its performance, even when it's placed under heavy load. There is, though, a fan on board, and you're going to want to keep the bottom here clear so that the air can flow properly. So it intakes at the bottom here, and it will exhaust through the back here next to the hinges. The fan is not all that noisy. I've heard worse, it's not very high pitched, but you will notice it, especially if you are running a video editing app or perhaps if the laptop is updating in the background. When you get it, you'll likely have a bunch of updates going on, so that fan will run initially, but generally sitting idle here or just looking at a web page or a word processing document, you're not gonna hear the fan all that much. And like I said, it's not all that loud even when it's under heavy load. All right, one last thing to take a look at and that is its Linux support. We booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu a little while ago. It did detect the touch display, the audio, the video, even the webcam, but unfortunately the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were not detected properly. So although it performed fine on the Linux side, it wasn't able to get the Wi-Fi functioning. You would have to plug in some additional device for that. The Wi-Fi on board of this computer is a Realtek Wi-Fi, an RTL 885-2BE, uh, it looks like. And you can swap that out if you want because it is socketed. But at the moment, at least, it is not getting detected properly on the Linux side. But overall, I found this to be a very nice value, a nicely constructed PC that performs well even at the low end. It's got a great keyboard. I think it's a really nice productivity device that can also do some gaming on the side. That is going to do it for this look at the Yoga 6 for 2022. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman. Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.